Is vitamin C a waste of time in your money? <laughs> you ever watch one of those like expose kind of like 2020 kind of things and they're like, is it worth it? anyway? No, but for real, is vitamin C a waste of your time and money? Vitamin C might arguably be one of the most controversial ingredients in skincare, so much so that I have decided to do a series around it. There is so much to be said about vitamin C. There's a lot to be asked about it too, which is why we got this video. Is it stable? Is it going to help with your dark spots? What about collagen production? Are derivatives even worth it? Which actives can you use with vitamin C? Which act can't you use with vitamin C? There's so many questions, hence this series. And thank you so much to Olay for partnering with me in part two. So keep watching. So Olay just launched a vitamin C line and I actually got to try it out months before it became public because I am one of the chosen ones. No. I no, it's okay. I am one of the chosen ones. Yes, I got to try the Regenerous Vitamin C Plus Peptide 24 Moisturizer. I have to say it's very silky feeling. It's lightweight, doesn't feel heavy on the skin, worked really well with my sunscreens, and I like that it combined my Vitamin C step and my Moisturizer step in the morning. I personally don't like a lot of steps in my skincare routine. I want to do the least, but yet get the most. Some key ingredient callouts, ethyl ascorbic acid, niacinamide, amino peptide, and lactic acid. Now, some of us study inky lists, like we're part-time scientists trying to figure out why certain ingredients are in some of our favorite skincare products, but we often don't get to talk to the people who actually formulate our skincare. I am so happy to have had the chance to chat with Dr. Marcasia Black, PhD, senior scientist at Procter & Gamble. We chatted about vitamin C and how it pertains to skin of color. And we also talked about the Olay Regenerous Vitamin C Plus Peptide 24 products, which she had a hand in formulating. I, for one, am proud to see someone who looks like us talk to us about products that were tested on skin of color and that can help to address our unique skin care needs. So now let's kick it over to our chat. My name is Dr. Marcasia Black and I am an innovative scientist at OA working in product development and skincare formulation. I went to school in Atlanta, Georgia to Clark Atlanta University and then I went to Morehouse School of Medicine for um, my master's degree in biomedical research and I have a PhD in molecular and developmental biology. So I've been with uh, P&G for about three years and I, I work in product development um, in skincare formulation. So really excited to be a part of this. This is, you know, I, I was on the team of formulators that developed this product. So I'm so excited to be here and, and you know, just be able to talk about my little baby. Yes, <laughs> I love it. And I love that you dressed in the color of the occasion. I love that. I did not even do that on purpose. That is so funny. I was not even thinking about it. That's so yeah. great. So L-ascorbic acid is considered like the Rolls Royce of vitamin C, but it does have its drawbacks. The uh, Olay formula uses ethyl ascorbic acid. So can you talk to us about the difference between L-ascorbic acid and the form of vitamin C that's used in the Olay product? Sure. So the vitamin C in this formula is again, 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid. It's a very stable derivative of vitamin C and it's actually further stabilized by our unique formulation. And at Olay, we also test at least a two year shelf life of all of our products. So you have the same experience from the first use to the very last use when you're using our Olay product. So we hear that there are forms that aren't as irritating as L-ascorbic acid, but they may not have like the ability to help us with collagen production. Can this product help with both for the production of collagen because everyone wants that snatch skin for as long as possible. Um, but is it also something that's gonna help with brightening at the same time? Because we are looking to brighten and snatch, snatch and brighten. <laughs> Absolutely. So avoiding irritation is the key factor for skin of color. And the two forms that we have the best experiences with um, are 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid and magnesium ascor ascorbyl phosphate. So specifically with 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid, which is in our vitamin C plus peptide 24 products, 
um, and I'm actually quite proud to say have been tested on people of color with various skin tones, um, we've shown really great results that brighten dull skin and visibly correct skin discoloration. And then for the collagen side, um, we do have um, peptides in our formulation that are actually known to stimulate collagen. So you're gonna get you know, your bang for your buck with um, our vitamin C and collagen in this uh, formulation. I noticed that there's also niacinamide in here as well. Can we talk about the difference between, someone had asked this question actually, the difference between vitamin C and niacinamide and other tyrosinase inhibitors? So your reference to tyrosinase inhibitors is really talking about the melanin production pathway. So fighting hyperpigmentation and skin discoloration is complicated. And um, the melanin production pathway has over 10 steps in this process. So vitamin C and niacinamide interfere at different points in this pathway to reduce um, discoloration issues. So first with vitamin C, it actually acts in two ways. It's a powerful antioxidant, meaning that it can inactivate free radicals that actually trigger hyperpigmentation and the melanin production pathway. And vitamin C also acts as a tyrannase inhibitor meaning it inhibits the actual production of melanin. And then on the other hand, niacinamide is not a tyrannase um, inhibitor. Rather, it interferes with the transfer of melanin to your actual skin cells. And this is why vitamin C and niacinamide work so well together to combat those skin discoloration and hyperpigmentation issues because they impact the melanin production pathway so differently. And I'm so excited to say that we have actually formulated these two powerhouse ingredients together in our vitamin C plus peptide 24 collection. Okay. So speaking of uh, vitamin C and niacinamide working well together, there were a lot of questions about what you can and cannot use with vitamin C. So I'm gonna go through a couple that came from the questions from my audience. And you know, you could let us know like if this is a good thing that we should be using together or we shouldn't. Can you use a salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide cleanser before applying a serum containing vitamin C? I would say in principle, yes, but it also depends because the challenge here is really skin irritation. Um, this is going to come down to each person's individual skin sensitivity and tolerance. For example, if you are already using a salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide cleanser and your skin is tolerating those ingredients fairly well, adding vitamin C to your routine will probably be fine. Um, but some factors such as how often you use these ingredients together or how closely you use some of these acne fighting ingredients can really impact your skin. So I would also say if anyone has these concerns, I would check with your dermatologist to really understand what is gonna work best um, for your skin needs. So people did ask about what other acids are compatible with vitamin C. And I would assume that your answer might be similar to what you just said about in theory, yes, but your yes. Skin, everyone's skin is different. Yes, yeah, so this really depends on the level of the acid and the product formulation. So in general, some alpha hydroxy acids or AHAs can be used with vitamin C. And actually Olay's vitamin C plus peptide 24 products have vitamin C, the lactic acid, which is AHA plus niacinamide. So in this unique formula, they really work synergistically to improve your skin evenness and brighten skin. And I will say that every vitamin C derivative and every AHA are not going to be compatible because product formulation, again, really plays an important role here. Another question people had um, in, in concerns of, you know, what they can use their vitamin C with. A lot of people wanted to know if they can use it with retinol. So I use a vitamin C in my routine and a retinol, but I use it at different times. I use the vitamin yeah. C during the day and then I use my retinol at night. Um, but some people feel like they can't use vitamin C during the day. Sure. So I definitely cannot speak for other products or brands, um, but for Olay, we know it is fine to use vitamin C plus peptide 24 in the morning and our retinol 24 product 
at night. So if you're interested in using these products in your routine, it's definitely best not to mix these products at the same time during the same application, but kind of separating them morning and evening is usually the best approach. The vitamin C plus peptide 24 line has a cleanser, a serum, and moisturizer. I can see people already seeing, well, it comes in a line. Can you use all of those together or should they be used with other products? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. So you can use all of the products together. They've been tested, they're safe to use. Um, and then another piece, it really comes down to your individual preference. You said we do have the brightening serum in this collection. We do have the cleanser. They all work great together. They are formulated to be gentle to work together. And then if people do want to swap them out with their other products, I would say that because you obviously you can't vouch for you know, products that you didn't formulate yourself. <laughs> but yeah. if anyone wants to kind of combine something else in their routine to do the low and slow approach when it comes to adding anything additional. Absolutely. Okay. Speaking of cleansers, and I think we kind of touched on this in the last, in one of the last few questions. Is it true that using an AHA cleanser before mm -hmm. using a vitamin C helps with penetration? So in general, no specific cleanser is really needed to help vitamin C penetration. And I can especially say that about the vitamin C plus peptide 24 hydrating moisturizer, um, a specific cleanser is not gonna make it more effective. And then since you know we have lactic acid in this product, an AHA, like an AHA cleanser is probably not necessary. And in this vitamin C collection, we do offer the BHA cleanser. So, so this is salicylic acid that is in this cleanser. So in general, no specific cleanser is needed for better penetration of vitamin C. There's a population of people who watch this channel who have sensitive skin. And when you have sensitive skin and you have skin of color, oftentimes, you know, that sensitivity can lead to inflammation that can lead to hyperpigmentation. So people tend to be very, very careful and conservative with their routines. So someone did ask, um, how would you use the vitamin C products in your routine if you have sensitive skin? Are there other products that they should eliminate in their routine? Basically, they're asking like, sh how basic should their routine be if they're gonna use these products for someone who has sensitive skin? So this is going to depend on your level of skin sensitivity and how often and when you are adding this to your routine. So in general, this product is a great moisturizer and has some daily exfoliant benefits as well. So this may be best to almost swap um, kind of a like product for another like product. Um, so you're not necessarily adding to your routine, but maybe placing, replacing your current um, product with one of these offerings. I say this so often on the channel that I feel like it's common knowledge, but just in case anybody is new watching, you of course want to finish off your daytime routine with sunscreen because otherwise you're pretty much playing yourself if you're not wearing sunscreen, no matter what your skin tone is, right? A hundred percent. So really that the SPF is really just that layer of protection to not cause or prevent any additional hyperpigmentation. So um, SPF is your best friend for sure. So like I said, there is so much to talk about vitamin C that I will definitely have more videos on this topic in the future. If you still have additional questions, leave them below. There were questions that you guys asked that I didn't get to in this video, but we'll talk about it in future vitamin C videos. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. If you wanna connect with Dr. Black, I will leave the link to her LinkedIn profile in the description box so you can follow her there. Speaking of following, in the description box will also be links where you can follow me on social. Links to the products mentioned in this video will also be in the description box. I want to say thank you again to Olay for partnering with me in this video. And I will see you fine folks in the next one. Bye guys.